Well, here we are again. <laughs> time for, um, this time, landscape drawings. Uh, I'm reflecting this time on the um, time spent with Mr. Gamble uh, post the Art Students League era and um, the opportunity he gave us to paint, to do landscape painting with him in the summer at his own place, multiple bedrooms, multiple, you know, studios, a real sort of dorm configuration, meals, the whole thing was amazing what he did for us, a real atelier. Um, the, um, and, but I want to talk about uh, a certain project that he set me on, and I want to do it because something you may enjoy doing. Uh, before I start, let me thank uh, Stephen J. and David D. for their ongoing uh, uh, recurring donations. They're extremely generous guys. Really appreciate it. And there's Ollie. Ollie M. How are you doing, Ollie? <laughs> thank you. That is a really nice, that is a really nice donation. <laughs> Ollie was a student of mine. He came all the way over from London and spent time with me here in the little old town of Woodsville in my, in my old courthouse building. Uh, good friend, Ali. Hope things are going well for you. And uh, and here we go. So um, I'm going to walk through these uh, landscapes. Uh, I'm going to do them, first of all, I'm going to do them quickly. You're going to see what size they are, three, and I'm gonna, then I'm going to show you in a video thing. I'm not sure how to do this exactly, um, but I'm going to give it a try. But I'm going to show you these first. Let me just show you. Um, the idea here was to go out, this is, this is again under Gamel's tutelage, he said, I want you to go out and do some landscape compositions in pencil. Now, my guess is he may not have meant for them to be virtually, virtually uh, charcoal studies, but um, that's sort of what they became. They became pencils. I started with a, just a 2H. I began using my, through the range of pencils. I started realizing I was getting a slick look, so I switched to, to softer pencils and by the time I was done, I was probably using 8B. So I started with 2H and then moved through. But I found the 2H sort of in the background, for example, where you're drawing the hilltop. That's a great value back there. And you can see the need for the Bs down in the foreground. So uh, let me show you this group. And then I'm going to tell you what I did, uh, the, what the whole format was. Now remember, I'm giving you the inches on this. You see, this, these are very small. And I'm going to give you a more visceral view of them using a different kind of a screen at the end or after, after I do this. So here we go. This is all in Williamstown. These first four, I think, are in Williamstown, and the rest are elsewhere. Um, so, all right. Remember, these are pencils, and they're little. So, in fact, um, I'm going to show you for now, I'm going to show you this in front of me so you get an idea how little this actually is. That's that one. Most of the rest of them are smaller than these two. These two are the biggest. Um, and I just got getting smaller and smaller. I didn't see any reason to paint, to draw so big. These were done uh, in a uh, setting, uh, I'm sorry, in a time frame of two to three hours. It's sort of a typical one-shot painting, except it was all values. And I found it to be a really useful exercise, really, really, really delightful, and, um, and uh, really instructive from the point of view of, uh, of, of coming up with compositions. Some people like to go out with cameras and, and that sort of thing and, uh, you know, and then and, and, and find the shots and then maybe frame them and that sort of thing and work from that. But I really, really get more out, more pleasure, for one thing, out of being out there on the spot. And then more, then you're introduced really, um, shall we say, viscerally in that two to three hours to the subject, to the form, to the, all these sorts of things. You wouldn't be introduced to that. All you'd be getting if you took a photograph would be some sort of framing of the thing. But uh, so this is that group. And then then, then uh, this was at the Quabbin Reservoir, near the Quabbin Reservoir, there's a, there's a ruin that's in Massachusetts, somewhere in the southernmost part of the state. And uh, I think that's off Route 9 if any of you guys are interested in going and peeking at it. Now, I'm giving you these shots so you can actually bring them up closer. I'm not happy with these particular shots because they're, they, they tend to be contrasty and they show marks that you can't even see in the, with the naked eye. And, you know, so the camera's got, got, always got this stuff. The phone cameras always have this thing going on where the contrasts are, are like overexposure almost. So this is at the beach. I think this was probably in Nantucket. And what was interesting is um, 
some years later, I was at a show um, in, um, I want to say it was New York, but it was the drawings of Da Vinci were there. And I found this teensy little, imp what I called at that point, an impressionist uh, a landscape by Leonardo. And I'm saying here it's two to three inches. I think it was smaller than that. I think it was the size of a postage stamp. So I'm going to commend this web. And now he doesn't frame that or anything like that. It doesn't look like composition as much as a study of some trees. Um, a um, copse of trees, I think, is where the British would say it. So uh, having, having done that, I may come back to these. But now I'm going to uh, go to the... Um, I, this picture is actually something we're looking at right now. In fact, let me show you. This is my hand, okay? This will give you some idea. So these are landscape drawings. This was a folder I found, and I've been looking for these for some time to share with students to give them an idea of what we did and something they, they want to try themselves. But it's a delightful way to search out a, comp a, uh, a composition. So that gives you an idea of how big these drawings are. When you see that pencil, that's the pencil's size. Um, after I go through this group, I'm going to show you, I'm going to take uh, the viewfinders and just show you exactly what we did. You see that these things have very carefully articulated uh, uh, square lines around them. So uh, this is my attempt to, um, this is my attempt to, um, <laughs> I'd love to get it more straight, but all right. Yeah, so you can see the inch markers over here on the side. I just purposely left. I, I purposely left that. I, I should be doing that this way, shouldn't I? There, see the ruler. I just left that there, so you could look at how big this is. All right. So well, let me. I'm going to describe to you now what we did actually while I'm looking at these. All right. This is really easy. Um, so you see, this has a very square edge around it. In the photograph here, it may be a little bit off. Looks like it is. The uh, my projector is probably just a tiny bit off. Might be able to adjust that, but let me. Uh, but what happened was what we did. What I did was, and what must have been the Gamel suggestion, was we went out and looked at Ang's landscapes, and we just ran a line across the top of this thing with the very finest two H kind of pencil. We just ran across it, and then I ran some more strategic lines, you know, bits or lengths of strategic lines at all sorts of other places, seeing if I could get the the composition going. Now I have to get out certain things about how wide this is going to be, so places like this or that point, and how close they were to this edge. So I'm looking through the viewfinder. So I'm looking through the viewfinder, and in a sort of a typical way, right? And I don't have an idea precisely what the composition is. I'm looking over there and trying to find a composition just like you would with, a, with an oil painting. And I'm looking out there, and um, uh, and I'm getting some idea though. I think I'd like to have it just this far from the bottom, similar but a little bit bigger, that far from the top or on the same on the side over here, whatever that's worth. And I'd observe some other key locations, like the location of these exits. And I, at, you know, at some point you're noticing also things like this, but the biggest thing is to get the height of the biggest part of this mass and the length of it to, to appear right. But once I got that all going, I then took the viewfinder and I just set it down on the, um, I just set it down on the picture, on the on the drawing that didn't have any lines on it, and then I was able to just trace the the the, the rectangle. So that's where the very square edges come from, and it really gave me authority at that point. You know, and I, of course I did it on all sides so that we had a. Uh, but at that point, I had really sharp edges. I was very careful to make them very vertical, very similar in measurement in height, height and, and uh, so on. And, and of course, uh, at that point, of course, I made sure I was looking through the viewfinder at whatever I'd chosen here. But um, that's something you just sort out. And so, uh, but then we, as Gamble's process worked, we would just draw, rather as it were, from top to bottom. And some people would say from the back to the front. But I think of it as drawing the lightest like a watercolorist to the next lightest. And you see in a landscape like this one, you can see how that's logical. And it's a very logical way to proceed. You can treat it like a watercolorist. You can draw the stuff down here lightly also. You don't have to draw it dark right away, but in this way of working, we didn't. But in the meantime, so then what I was doing out there was I was just searching out all of the shape work, right? Major value masses, this one darkest, busiest, this next darkest. You can see how it's moving back through. Now, the one thing I probably would do if I was doing it today is I probably wouldn't leave that very obvious line that's almost obnoxious. The lines, they could have been done without lines. It could have been lines and then simple clean massing. 
but it doesn't make any difference when you're trying to come up with a compositional idea. So that's, that's what we did. And um, I'm just going to walk you through these and see if there's anything else I might want to say about the other ones. There may not be, but I also want you to have a chance to see these in a setting that is, um, you know, where you can see that it's not, um, I hope we don't have shadows on that. So you can see that it's, it's not uh, in extra sharp focus. These might be a little too far out of focus. Yeah, they're a little, just a tiny bit fuzzy. It's the best I can do with that lens, whatever that is on this machine. So it is what it is. But between the two of them, you get some idea of, of what this looks like. But you can see that the, the attention I've paid to the articulation of specifics when you get down to these trees. And you'll see the same thing in that Leonardo I was talking about. When you get down to these shapes, I'm very specific in making these high contrast players, that ones that read well. And then, of course, I'm, everything else I'm doing has to do with, you know, the counts of things like this and all that sort of thing. But um, I don't know what else I would say about this. And again, in every case, I believe we started out as per Gamble's advice. And I think you'll still see Tom Dunley and others recommending this. And starting out by setting up the sky out here first. But I was always the guy that was all over the place at once having an impressionist background. So I would definitely jump down here and get these things configured and, and some of the relationships figured out of the width to height so that then I could put this frame on it. You can see in this one, um, on this one, can you? On some, well, this one you can see I adjusted the frame at the bottom. I actually changed it. So, but it's just a search for a composition, the much way I've talked about before. I don't need to make long lectures out of this. Part of this is just half the fun of being in Williamstown. So here's a, uh, here's a shot of what Gamel called the bee tree. <laughs> and um, uh, his property was down here. It was on a hill facing to the north. We'd climb up, climb up, climb up, and there's this big uh, uh, cornfield. And there's one tree. <laughs> it, was, it was great. And it had a bee hive up in the top of it somewhere. So it was a subject. It was a subject for Gamel in some of his landscapes. And uh, it was irresistible. We were, we were, at that point, I probably was without a vehicle or was expected to hang around close to the, to the, to, uh, to the building, to the studios. In that early phase, that's the way it was. So the same old thing, though, working from the back uh, to the front, you know, jumping and getting the bigger mass here, getting that big thing set the way I wanted it, find some, find the placement. This would have been a big, significant thing here. And how big did I want it in the page? That would have been pretty significant in establishing the frame. But that's the sort of thing you're going to figure out fairly quickly. And then mostly, as you can see, it's a value study with attention, as in, or impressionist attention, to texture, uh, smoothness over, you know, some places and textured in other places. I'm not trying to draw trees with marks. I show you this hunter behind me, this Robert Douglas Hunter. He, he's much more of an, this is, this is, this is uh, he's doing this for sale. He's doing drawings, landscape drawings uh, for the marketplace. You know, they're prints. This became a print. Uh, but uh, mine are not like that. These are minor sure, sure studies. And as you can see in the other ones, these are not big. That one down there, what do you see the ruler next to it? It's not big. It's probably, what is it? Uh, maybe three, maybe three inches high, two. Yeah, it looks like about three, three, three by less than four. Somewhere in that range. So I don't know what else I can say about that one. But then, um, but these are the Williamstown ones. So there's that, and um, again, you can see that I'm doing the Leonardo thing. The foreground is higher contrast, busier, sharper, more detail, more data, and the further back you get, the less so, you know, the, the aerial perspective thing. I wasn't doing that by the book. I was doing that by just looking. But this is, again, a search for a composition. I think I've mentioned to you that one time I went out and took composition in Gamble. I brought it back to Gamble, and he said it looks like a postcard. And he was, he was sounded like he was insulting me. So <laughs> he certainly wasn't praising me. In any case, though, that gave me um, uh, part of the, the impetus to go out there and do some landscapes and uh, as compositions and think about them. And of course, wonder about what he was saying and thinking. But these, if you look closer at them, you can see I've worked out some level of details, um, suggestions of bark in some places, things quite articulate or reasonably articulate. Uh, and this is the one I mentioned before of the... Um, Quabbin Reservoir, Ruin. Um, 
And uh, but you can see what you can get out there in a landscape like this. Look at the look at the cast shadows down here. The, the wonderful sense of backlight. By the way, we were frequently put into by Gamble into backlight. He was asking us to paint in backlight. Um, I don't know if all those pictures weren't backlight. I forgot to think about that. When I go through the next group or go through the group again, we might consider that. This one happens, by the way, to have a secondary line, so it looks more more elegant. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Must have been for fun. Uh, but you can see that I've spent time, this is again in that two or three hour window, I've spent time doing some levels of detail at certain places, things I liked. Now some of the idea here was if you were going to paint from it, would you have the amount of detail you wanted to work with? So, um, but you could easily see evolving a drawing, a painting out of one of these things, albeit tiny. Look at this one, what is this, two, two and a half inches by, by maybe three, yeah. So these are getting littler and littler for no particular reason. And then I'll give you this last one, which is from the beach um, and probably Nantucket, hey, Amy? Um, yeah, on those barrels down there on the beach, like for a horse barrel ride, you know, the kind they use for that uh, equestrian riding. But there it is again. And again, this is in somewhat backlight. It's almost, it's three quarters backlight. You can see the light hitting this from this direction and the shadows. So, um, nevertheless, that's, that's an idea um, that gives you an idea of what you can do. And this one, again, is really tiny. You can see that total height of that one is maybe two and a half inches, and you'll see it in the other drawing. So I'll just quickly bounce through these one more time, if you aren't bored already. And um, I wish I could say, if you have questions, this would be the time to ask them. <laughs> um, but as you can see, these are what I would call value studies, but their point is the composition, to see what the composition is. And that for me was best done as it worked out. Just, I didn't have a plan one way or the other. I just began to do what it would be the amount of charcoal drawing studies, just pure value studies, you know, full value. Searching for the um, um, lightest light, darkest dark in the whole range and then articulating according to the power of the order of things. And one of them earlier on, and this one has some of that too, you'll see uh, this one has a flagpole in it. You can see that really difficult to do that sort of thing with a teensy little kneaded eraser. I want to say, by the way, that one of the things we were doing was we were bringing points. We were, this isn't even pointy anymore, but we would sharpen these things so it'd have a half inch of, of lead sticking out and then we would sand that to get it really sharp. And typically a lot of what we're doing was with that kind of a point. Now, once in a while, I would use a softer, a, 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 a blunter point for some of the grainier areas of trees. Probably um, would have, um, probably would have done that in the two earlier ones. I'll talk about that. Um, but, but that's what it is. And this one, what is this one? This is, this is the HB. It's a sort of a middle of the road thing as you're starting to move through. H, 2H, uh, H, HB, you know, and then all the others, 2B, 4B, jumping, you know what I mean? That's sort of what I did. All right. So these are, these are pencil compositions at very small scale that you can do in two to three hours. And the only reason I'm showing you is I was, because it's something that gives you a chance to study values in landscape and really come up with compositions. I thought you might enjoy thinking up, thinking about that. All right. So um, I think I've finished using this contraption. That's pretty cool. We succeeded. I did mean to stick my hand in there so you could see how big these drawings are in relation to my fingers. Does that give you some idea? <laughs> that those drawings are quite small. If you use a sharp enough point, though, it's amazing how articulate you can be. All right, so let's lose that and get back to the whistle. Well, I like getting back to the Leonardo. Um, may as well, and then back back our way through it again. But I guess I was saying this is two to three inches. This is hard to see actually when in the in the in the uh, in the um, window. It was, in a, it was under glass at this museum, and uh, I think part of a notebook page or whatever. And uh, but you can see he's doing in a certain sense the same thing. In some ways, this is much more studied, minor, broader, you know, you know, much more, much, shall we say, much less studied per inch. There's, there's lots you can do to these things. I, you know, you get the sense with a lot of guys out doing, doing imaginative paintings that these guys are doing stuff in which, that will help them actually to be very specific with a particular painting. And you can, certainly pencil is great for that. It's amazing what this guy's done with red chalk. 
But red chalk is also very sharpenable, and, and its point actually I find lasts longer than, uh, well, anything but the hardest pencils. It really lasts well, the red chalk that uh, Gamble provided for me. All right, I'll just back through these, and, and uh, I, wish, I wish I had somebody here to say something, um, because, uh, or to ask something. <laughs> um, Again, I, I'm going to remind you that we were mostly working in backlight. Gamble's idea was, you know, the articulating of silhouettes, and you wouldn't have 10,000 sort of little bits of grass to draw and that sort of thing. And um, let's see if I can get back. Am I going back? Yeah. That's probably my favorite one, small as it is. And, uh, you know, I, I suppose just because I'm getting out of just sheer landscape. I'm not a landscape painter. Um, that's not my thing. I, I certainly have done my share, but but um, I, I'm much more organized around, you know, that sort of, this sort of thing. <laughs> Structural, 3D, formy, that sort of thing. Again, uh, see how square the framing is. It's very carefully done. Um, the rest of it, as I said, is a value study. And uh, if you look at those, if you look at those, as I mentioned before, the Millet bunny pictures, I think you'll see something of this, what it's like to study a hillside and watch the light coming down the hillside. Um, really delightful thing. And by the way, I find this rather intimidating the first time I did. I won't pretend I didn't. And I want to say again that what I did is I went around with a very light pencil and I did a lot of marking, but I didn't do it like like construction drawing. I actually drew shapes. I, I would draw like, like I normally do, some significant part of this. Because the example Gamble gave us was was Ang, and if you look at the drawings in the background of a lot the numbers of his pictures, you'll find that he put his pencil down that very fine, almost invisible pencil with a really sharp, sharp point, and he just traveled around the whole painting. You know, he just traveled from left to right, right across the picture. And I found that once I'd started that, I had that that fine pencil point gave me a, a sense of being less intimidated. I could do any all the earlier marks in light pencil, so it was more in that sense like a watercolor process. Um, and then you, I would be gradually bringing the darks. Uh, the whole idea was like watercolor to bring the general, the lightest lights, and generally come to the darkest dark over time. So I can't say I did this like an impressionist way. I think now, which is what's my darkest dark and my lightest light. I, I wouldn't say I did that in these. I was much more careful than that. <clears throat> yeah, and so uh, judging by this one, this one here, the light is coming. It looks like see because this is has shade on it. It may be coming. From this direction, can I tell? Yeah, it appears to be. I'm looking like a possibly a shadow line here, so possibly a side light. It doesn't look like a very strong light, though, in any case. It doesn't look like bright sunlight. Uh, and again, as I was showing you the Leonardo one, you can see that he was really studying up a lot of what was happening here, way beyond what I was doing. And I'd be love to know from Leonardo how long he spent on that one, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, when you do these lines out here, make them strong enough to see so that you can actually, and it, so it is a composition, but you're always aware of the rectangle. But be very thoughtful about getting to the rectangle. Uh, this one's crooked, just photograph crooked. It's not crooked in my original. And um, yeah, Gamble talked about uh, silhouette and, uh, and pattern. He was always interested in any masses and the kind of patterning they would create. And so this kind of thing, you know, when it produced a long, continuous uh, line, it was, a, you know, it was something we studied. We studied it up. And of course, if you're, a, if you're in the game, the pictorial game, this playing to this, playing to this and or this and that sort of thing, these long, these long, continuous lines are a set. And if I had known anything back then, I might have adjusted these sets a little bit, a bit more aware of the beauty of them in relation to each other rather than just making a nice copy like a, like a good uh, charcoal draftsman would do. But you can see, as I said before, that I, these, are, these are fairly fine in, the, in this two or three hour period. You know where you're going to have to put time in, and you, again, make sure you start out setting these things up with a fine point, and then that point won't show, actually, after a little while, uh, you know, once you get that dirty middle tone back there. All right. So this is lumps, textures, you know, this is one of those things, again, you can see this is three quarters, or, well, it says, says side light, doesn't it? I was, maybe I was cheating a little bit, but you can see it's it's back and side. <laughs> maybe I was being half good out there. Yeah. 
I, you know, so much, so much pleasure out of these, uh, the times I spent there. If actually, I have to tell you, just like you do, I felt completely daunted in doing these, and I didn't think anything of them. I just saw the, how, how poor they were. You know, I just, they seemed inadequate. But um, looking back on them, I'm sort of amazed at what I was able to do. <laughs> Look at this silly area right here. I wonder if I could pull that forward. No, I can't. It just switched on me. Darn but there's a lamp post right here. This this actually was the a schoolyard, I think. <laughs> and um, as, anyway, the, but the lamp post. Look how finely that's articulated, right? Yeah, real delight. It values it's an amazing feast. It's just an amazing feast. It's just something to enjoy. And think about that. You can finish an entire composition in two to three hours. And by the way, if you can't, and you can get the same day the next day, do what Monet did and go out and do another one to continue it the next day. No harm. Yeah. So this is, but this is the classic. Just Gamma would stand us out there on, a, on his hillside, and we would look. There would be plains of mountains, you know, plains of flat, flat, flat plains. <laughs> and so background, middle ground, you know, secondary middle ground, blah, 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 the foreground, all this type of stuff. But in this case, plains of value, very evident plains of value. And, uh, and the shapes that go with them. You can see I'm finally at the beginning of this. And this is very early. This might have been the first one I did. This one here, I'm getting into some texture uh, down here, but not thinking any much. I don't think much more about it. Um, yeah. 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 Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That's, that was a little ride. Uh, oops. Um, so that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, as I said, it's different. The hunter here is done as a, as a as a piece of art, and it's a different game. And um, there's nothing to stop you from doing that as well. But um, and the and but that you know, if you've seen the old Watson Guptill books, that's rather in that manner of, of of using a pencil, you know, a stroke, put down a stroke and leave it, much like paint, uh, you know, a stroke of value. And uh, you did a number of those, and they're all really commendable, really quite 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 cool. <laughs> all right. Robert Douglas Hunter. All right. Well, that's what I have for you today. All right. So um, I hope you have a good week. I want to thank you uh, three again very much for your uh, contributions. Um, uh, and uh, hello again to Ollie. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen you on here before. Maybe maybe once. Uh, so I'm really delighted to have you. Throw something at me with a comment or something at some point along here in one of these videos and give me something to talk about. Um, but uh, thank you for your comments. Thank you for sharing and and uh, and uh, subscribing and uh, so on, liking. Much appreciated. And uh, we will see you in the next one. I hope your week is excellent uh, in every way. <laughs>